We don't need another reverse equation, right? Ah, that's a good question. Yeah, I don't think so. In fact, Yeah, in fact, I think what I said before was slightly wrong. I was saying how the, all those steps were reversible. But the last step is not reversible. The last step where you deprotonate that alpha carbon is not reversible. Um, again, so I, I think I might have misspoke before. So the, uh, as a whole, the Claisen condensation is not a reversible reaction. Because that last step where the, uh, um, where the alkoxide deprotonates that alpha carbon, that is not reversible. Um, so there is no retro Claisen condensation. There's no retro Claisen condensation. The uh, beginning steps are reversible, but overall the reaction is not reversible because the last step isn't when we do the last deprotonation. That's a good point. Actually, I was wrong. Um, there's at least one other thing we have to talk about for the Claisen condensation. Um, let's see what would happen here. Because it could form like a five-member ring, it would, or like um, at least a five-member ring, it would attack intermolecularly. Right. And that tends to be more difficult, even though it should be the same thing. So we should do at least one example of that. That's definitely uh, likely to show up on a test. midterm there was a I think it was an intramolecular aldol and a mixed or a mixed aldol that made a ring somehow and I don't remember but there were two seven member during products and two five member during products and it said to, to circle the major products so we circled the seven member during but it was wrong mm -hmm. and the five member rings are more like preferable right. why is that I believe that five and six membered rings are more stable than any other ring. That might have been the reason. Uh, okay. Although seven membered rings are pretty good too. So um, it, it might be that just five and six is slightly more preferable, but um, seven membered rings are, I think are, are pretty good. So I'm not sure what the, what the reason is. Okay. You didn't even get an answer key? Or are well, they the answer key just had right. the five membered ring circled. Right, yeah. So um, if I looked at the possible answer, maybe I could see a reason why one was better. But it might just be that five and six membered rings are best. I'm not sure about that. All right, maybe we should do the mechanism here because uh, intramolecular is more complicated.
Okay. Very good. One thing that's helpful at this point is to count how many atoms will be in the ring. Well, if you start with the alpha carbon, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we know it's going to be, it's good to help. Uh, oftentimes people miscount how many atoms are in the ring. But you can use your finger. If you start with the alpha carbon, you get one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we're back to the alpha carbon. So there's six overall. Both of you got that right. So I drew a six-membered ring. Um, and uh, I use numbers. I don't bother numbering the alpha carbon or these asterisk carbon because I got label, other labels for those. But I numbered all these carbons in the middle, and it helps to get the ring over here. Notice a couple of tricks you can use here. It helps to start using abbreviations for the carbon chains that aren't doing much so that we don't have to keep writing things. We can write ethyl for this group and ethyl for this group. That saves us a little bit of time as uh, we're working through all this. It would be a good homework problem to try to get the product here without doing the mechanism. Because you should also be able to get the product without the mechanism as well. OK. Um, now there's one other topic for Clayson condensation, which is mixed Clayson condensations. All the problems we've done so far is when we had an ester attacking the same ester. It's possible for an ester to attack a different type of ester, and then you basically get a mixture of products. Because if you uh, four? Let's see. Yeah. So if you have A and B, you could have A attack B, or you could have B attack A, or you could have A attack A, or B attack B. Okay. Um, if you want, we can do an example of that, or if you want, we can move on to the um, aceto acetic acid synthesis and the malonic acid synthesis and all that stuff. It's fine. We can do continue on. I'll look at that in the book. Okay, good. I think you guys are actually pretty comfortable with the Clayson condensation. Notice here how, again, we used a base that matched our L groups over here. And these were ethyl groups, so we used an ethyl base, and we used ethanol as our solvent, so we don't have to worry about competition. Oh, and I, here I remembered that the intermediate steps were reversible, but the last step is irreversible when we did the decrotination. OK, so we won't do any mixed place and condensations, but you should do some practice on that, and uh, you'll probably assign some problems there. <coughs> 